Hey guys, this is Alan with Bothell STEM Coach, and we are continuing on with the AP Physics uh, review. So here's a free response question from 2000. Again, this is the Physics B exam, but um, you should be able to answer something like this. These are good conceptual questions to practice. So blocks one and two of masses M1 and M2 are connected by a light string as shown above. These blocks are further connected to a block of mass M by another light string that passes over a pull of negligible mass and friction. Blocks one and two move with a constant velocity V down the inclined plane, which makes an angle theta with the horizontal. The kinetic frictional force on block one is F, and that on block two is two F. Okay. On the figure below, draw and label all the forces on block M1. So M1 has some tension. I'm gonna call I'm gonna call like this is the tension in rope one and this is tension rope two. So this is T1, he's got M1G gravity, and he's got a normal force acting on him. And he's also got a frictional force, which they said was equal to little f. Okay. Now express your answers to each of the following terms of M1, M2, G, theta, and f. Determine the coefficient of kinetic friction between the inclined plane and block one. Okay. Um, they move at constant velocity, so there's no acceleration. See that? Constant velocity means acceleration is zero. That's a key part of this equation. So I'm going to do the net force equations on this. So first in the x direction, well, okay, let's let's set axes because we're at an angle and incline now. So we have to establish which way x and y is. And the way you always want to do it is x is always in the direction of the plane. And you don't always have to do it, but it's really a lot easier y is in perpendicular to is perpendicular to the direction of the plane okay so the tricky part is is um the frictional force and tension are in the x direction the normal force is in the y direction but mg has component forces in um two different directions right some and the x and some in the y and if you think about this this is the this is theta um these are the component forces. Now, um, because theta is here, and you kind of have to think about like why is theta here and not here. If you think about like if theta moves, think about which angle would align with that. I don't know if that that's a really good explanation. Like if if theta was zero, do you, would you want this angle to be zero or this angle to be zero? You would really want this one. You know what I mean? Like if theta were zero, completely flat, then this angle should be zero, not th not this one here. Okay, so so now we can do um, our net force equations here. So in the x direction, we know this is equal to zero because there's no acceleration in the x direction. It's moving at constant velocity. So let's see, I could do T1 minus force of friction, which is F, minus... Um, m1 g and then the x direction will be sine theta right okay and then the y direction the net force is also zero because it's not hopping off the plane in the vertical direction right it's only sliding along it so again the y direction the acceleration is zero that's equal to normal minus mg cosine m1 g cosine theta now the this little f. Now what they want us to find is the coinetic co coefficient of kinetic friction. This little f is equal to mu n, right? Okay. So if n here is equal to m one g cosine theta, then um, what I need is this force of what that tells me is um, the force of friction. Like this equation, if I rearrange it, I get the force of friction is equal to T1 uh, minus M1G sine theta. Hang on a second, let me think. Um, I need to put my answers in terms of M1, M2 theta. Oh. The other thing I should think about in this ten okay so like okay so l let's think about like what I don't know um, I know f is this and I know the normal force is this 
But the thing is, is I don't know. Um, I what I don't know is uh, the tension here, right? I, I I I still have this unknown. Like I can't really solve. Like I could make this mu n. Like I could say this is mu n is equal to this f is equal to t1 minus m1 g sine theta. And so mu is equal to t1 minus mg m1 g sine theta all over m1 g cosine theta. But the thing is, I don't know what t1 is, right? Like I need my answers in terms of this. So I'm going to have to look at block two. Block two is, um, let's kind of see how block two works. Block two would give me tension in terms of um, this tension one. So let's do the free body diagram on block two. I have T2 here. I have T1 pulling me this way because it's being pulled by two ropes, right? He also has a normal force and he also has M2G um, as, as this here, right? Um, Oh, you know what? Like, I think I think I was overthinking it. I can put my answers in terms of F here. So really, this one, I'm doing kind of the later parts. So this analysis is still fine, but I, I'm realizing this is what you have to do. The force of friction is equal to mu N. So mu is equal to F over N, okay? Because I can put my answers in terms of F, and N is M1G cosine theta, okay? That's my answer for B. Okay, so it was a lot simpler than um, what I was doing before. Okay. So um, let's uh, erase some of this just to make room here. Okay, so this is this is kind of a bizarre question, bizarre kind of setup. So I, I was a little confused. Determine the value of the suspended mass m that allows block one and two to move with constant velocity. Okay, so let's. Let's do some free body diagrams. This is mg, and this is t2, right? You kind of agree with that. Um, those are the only two forces on here. Now, these have to be equal. So t2 has to equal capital mg, and that's what this one has to equal. Why? Because this thing is moving at constant velocity. So the net, again, the net force is, the acceleration is zero, and hence the net force must be zero, because f equals ma. So um, the tension two is going to move up like that. Tension two is like that. So I need to find T1 in terms of T2. And then I can use this equation to sort of like figure out what M has to be. Because I know T1 has to equal a certain value. Does that make sense? So, um, okay. So let's set up the, so T in the X direction, T2 minus T1 minus, um, mg m2g times sine of theta equals zero so t1 is equal to oh, oh i got force of friction i forgot to draw the force of friction i have friction going this way actually oh shoot uh i just realized that which way are the blocks moving uh, i kind of assume the blocks were moving to the right they move down, they move in this direction. That sucks. So what that means is I set up the force of friction wrong because friction resists motion. So it's really this way, F. Okay. So when I did this equation, let's erase some stuff. This has to be T1 plus F. Okay. This part A is still fine because it's equal to mu times the normal force. And I, I know what the normal force is already. That didn't change, but this part changed. Okay, so it wasn't a big deal. Um, let me see. So let's back up a little bit here. I finally understand like how this question setup is supposed to work. Okay. Um, let's do this again. We'll do downward as a positive direction. D1 minus T2 minus the force of friction, which is 2F, um, plus 
m2g sine theta equals zero. So if I solve for t1, I get t1 is equal to t2 plus 2f minus m2g sine theta. Okay. Now uh, I know t2 is equal to mg, right? So this so this t1 is equal to capital mg plus 2f minus m2g sine theta. And now I'm going to put it into this equation, and all of this has to equal zero. So when I plug this into here, I get mg plus 2f minus m2g sine theta plus f minus m1g sine theta has to equal zero. Um, so mg, just going to make a separation here. Mg has to equal, bring everything to this side. Let's see, this is m1, this is m1 plus m2 g sine theta. This is plus 3f minus 3f. So m would have to equal m1 plus m2 g sine theta minus 3f all over g. So that's C and D. The string between block one and two is now cut. Determine the acceleration of block one while it's on the inclined plane. Okay. So now I've cut T1. So my net force in the X direction um, I got M1G sine theta. Okay. And then I still have friction fighting me minus friction um, but I no longer have T1 so that's it that has to equal M1 times A so the acceleration is equal to divide by M1 is G sine theta minus F over M1 okay all right uh, looks good. So thanks for watching guys. Um, hopefully you found that helpful. That was kind of an elaborate problem with variables and stuff, but it's not beyond the AP Physics 1 to ask you a question. This is everything you should still know and be able to do this problem if you're taking AP Physics 1. So, all right, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching the video guys. Please leave a comment, like, or subscribe below to catch up more of the content and see any links below. I offer free homework help on uh, Twitch and Discord. See you guys in the next video.